Good morning. So we are in AP 3D Art and Design. And I'm Jiro Masuda. And so for today's lesson, we are going to be covering the rubrics. So a couple of questions we want to handle in this lesson is, how much is each section worth? What is the rubric for selected works? What is the rubric for sustained investigation? So let's go into the warm up. And some of the things we already covered, uh, hopefully by this point, you understand that for the 3D portfolio, selected works is three works, two views each. Please make sure that the second view uh, gives the person who's gonna be scoring your portfolio more information. So detail shots are wonderful. Shots in situ, if it's an installation, is great. And don't forget, you can actually composite images. So if you have more than one additional view that you wanna show the reader, you can actually put that into one image, all right? The three works will be evaluated collectively and holistically based on the, the following three criteria. So the three works must state materials, processes, and ideas. That's 100 characters, including spaces. Each of the three works should demonstrate three-dimensional skills. Each of the three works, we're looking to demonstrate synthesis of materials, process, and ideas. Sustained investigation, 10 images. Now, once again, those are images, not works. And those images can also be composites. So if you have sketchbook drawings, if you have installation drawings, if you have process drawings, if you have experiments, those can all be composited together into a single image. And then you can have your 10 images with several finished pieces also. So the 10 images will be evaluated based on four scoring criteria. And each criteria is going to be scored separately. So the first criteria is 10 images that demonstrate investigation through practice, experimentation, and revision. 10 images that demonstrate investigation of materials, processes, and ideas. 10 images that demonstrate synthesis of materials, processes, and ideas. And 10 images that demonstrate three-dimensional skills. So you want to make sure you state in writing 1,200 characters, including spaces. Remember, that's characters, not words. So you want to identify two key points. One, you want to identify the question that guided your sustained investigation. The second paragraph will be describing how your sustained investigation shows evidence of practice, experimentation, and revision, guided by the questions in your sustained investigation. All right? So what you need to know. So in terms of the rubric for the entire portfolio, this is the breakdown in terms of the weighting. So selected works is 40% of the total score. And then each of those four areas, sustained investigation, inquiry, sustained investigation, practice, experimentation, and revision, sustained investigation, MPI, and sustained investigation skills are all weighted slightly different. Row A is 12%. Row B is 18%. Row C is 18% and row D is 12%. So what does this all mean? Well, so let's do it this way. Just to give you some background information, each of the five areas is gonna be scored by two different readers, all right? The readers are chosen at random by the computer. So your portfolio could have as many as 10 readers looking at each of these five areas, all right? And the way we score each of the sections, so selected works is scored on a scale of one to five. The four rows in sustained investigation are scored on a scale of one to three. So in theory, if you had a perfect portfolio, they got fives and threes, all right? So under selected work, two readers both gave it a five. You add that up, you get a 10. You multiply by four, and you get a composite score of 40. <clears throat> Sustained investigation, row A, inquiry. It's worth 12%. Re 
Reader one gave it a three. Reader two gave it a three. Total is a six. You multiply by a two, you get 12 points. Practice experimentation revision, 18%. So if reader number one gave it a three, reader number two gave it a three, your total will be a six times three is 18. Sustained investigation, materials, process, and ideas is worth 18%. So if reader one number one gave it a three, reader number two gave it a three, your total will be a six times three is 18 again. And art and design skills, 12%. So if reader number one gave it a three, reader number two gave it a three, your total will be a six. Multiply that by two, you get a 12. So the total composite score would be 100. So fives and threes represent the highest scores possible in those areas. So what you're looking at in this example is the highest possible score for the AP Art and Design portfolio, 100 total composite points. Once all the portfolios are scored, then statisticians actually calculate the distribution of fives, fours, threes, twos, and ones. So let's go into the rubric for selected works. So here's the rubric and you see the scoring is done on a scale of five, four, three, two, one. And each score point has three different criteria. So remember, selected works should be your three best pieces according, on this, according to the scoring criteria. They do not have to be related. They can be related, or they can be a mix of related and unrelated works. All three works should demonstrate visual design skills. All three should demonstrate written evidence of what went into the work. That's the materials, process, and ideas. And all three should demonstrate a relationship between the work and what is written. One key thing that I want to highlight for you is this statement here. If the written evidence is completely unrelated to the work, the maximum possible score is a two. All right. So that's that case where it says here, written evidence may identify. So if there's no relationship between the written evidence and the materials, process, and ideas with the piece, then the highest you can possibly get in that section is a two. So we're looking at advanced skills. We're looking at materials, process, and ideas that are clearly evident and demonstrate synthesis. At the four, we're looking for good three-dimensional skills. In terms of materials, process, and ideas, they're clearly evident. At the three, we're looking for moderate 3D skills. And for MPI, we're looking for them to be evident, but they may be unclear or inconsistently demonstrated. At the two, rudimentary 3D skills, and little to no evidence of a visual relationship among materials, process, and ideas. Then at the one, little or no visual evidence of 3D skills, and little to no evidence of the visual relationship among materials, process, and ideas. So let's first look at this set of work. So you have three pieces, two images each, and you have the materials, the ideas, and the processes outlined there. So the idea for this one, in all three, is comfort foods that provide a nostalgic or sentimental value to someone. Under materials, grilled cheese glazed ceramics, spaghetti glazed ceramic bowl, glazed ceramic meatballs, acrylic paint sauce, string. And then the third one, grapes glazed ceramic. Now process the same texture, same detail texture, a piece of real bread would have. In the second image, use unique materials to achieve the ultimate appearance of food and its essence. And in the third one, glaze is different colors with darks and lights. So in terms of three-dimensional skills, 
this is demonstrating rudimentary three-dimensional design skills. Um, most of the pieces are relatively flat. They really don't actively engage with three-dimensional space. That's that concept of occupied and unoccupied space. And that's really, really important for the 3D portfolio. Under materials, process, and ideas, the works are supposed to be direct copies of food, but they're not, they're pretty straightforward, okay? Um, and there's not really, it's not clear why the student chose ceramics to represent the food. It could be that there's another material that might have been better chosen to represent food, but this student chose to do it in ceramics and really didn't kind of give us an understanding of why. And this goes to that idea of synthesis. So the materials that they chose to use and the idea, the material didn't really inform the idea, all right? So the only case where you see a little bit of that synthesis is in that second one where they're using string to represent the spaghetti. At this point, it's like, okay, we, we're starting to get there, but it's a pretty minimal um, manipulation of materials. In terms of the written evidence, they've chosen to recreate comfort foods that provide a nostalgic or sentimental value to someone, but they don't elaborate on this motivation. And that's what they could have done in the material section or in the processes section. So remember that it's 100 characters, including spaces. You can add more information that helps inform the readers about your rationale for why you chose certain things, right? And hopefully that'll give the readers a better understanding of is there synthesis or is there not synthesis? So this one scored a two. So in this portfolio, three images, or sorry, six images, three works, two images each. And if you notice, this is something slightly different. These are all virtual 3D design software. And that's what they are listed under processes. Under materials, it's not clear. They say metal, they say metal slash wood, they say glass slash metal. But is that what the piece is intended to be if it was actually constructed? because they exist purely virtually. So under ideas, on the first two, I use common objects in life as templates, reflecting the feeling of space and life. So realize that those two works are actually related. The third work, I put some things together to form new things. This is an unrelated. So probably the first two works came from sustained investigation because we see that the ideas are related, but the third work is not related, but they're not judged on the relationship with one another, okay? So in terms of 3D skills, we see good to moderate 3D skills. There's definitely an activation of three-dimensional space. There is actually, there is a lot of occupied, unoccupied space going along. There's also a really creative use of contrast. So then next under materials, process, and ideas, the idea that I put things together to form new things, this doesn't give the reader very much understanding of where this is leading to us and how the materials and the processes inform the idea, all right? Um, in the case of the first work, you know, this is heavily referencing the Sputnik lamps of the 1950s, and that would have been helpful to put under either processes or materials to show that the processes, ideas, materials were a little more, more integrated and that there was synthesis going on. And then under writing, the written evidence is a little ambiguous and unclear. So, you know, that's where if they had chosen to write more in terms of materials or more in terms of processes, that would have maybe made things a little bit more clear and helpful. And so this work scored a three.
this piece, once again, is a little more advanced. The idea in the first piece, heartless. So you see in the first image, you see a photograph, and then you see a sculpture on top of a base. Materials are listed as clay, photo, frame, wooden block. Process, a heart placed next to a woman suggests the inability to function as the woman is missing a crucial element of her body. The second work, two images. The idea to visually capture the tension between things whole and fragmented, highlighting the increasing distortion of the world around us. Materials listed are bulb, cord, and plexiglass. Process, severed cord displayed in a separate plexiglass container. The third work, once again, you see a photograph in a frame and what looks to be a wooden stool. Under idea, the concept of incompleteness is relevant not only in a natural setting, but also in a social context. Materials, wood, frame, photo. Process, juxtaposition of photo and stool. So under 3D skills, this definitely demonstrates good 3D skills. Even though the work is relatively minimal, the activated space between the frame and the sculptures is that aspect of three-dimensional design. In each of the pieces, even though the compositions seem very minimal, a lot of things are being considered. Form, balance, and contrast, right? And those elements are creating tension and generating certain meanings or associations in the reviewer. Under materials, process, and ideas, you have a visual relationship between the materials, process, and ideas. That's evident. But in a few of the works, they're not fully integrated with one another. Um, the student has some well-defined ideas, but sometimes they lack the, the specificity that would allow the idea to be truly explored. So in the work number three, incompleteness in a social setting, but the two objects, there's not enough an association why the stool is on its side or upside down in proximity to the stool, all right? So there's a lot of stuff that the student is expecting the person to kind of fill in the blanks, um, but sometimes that leads to an incomplete idea, all right? In terms of the writing, it's minimal, but materials and ideas are clearly stated. Processes aren't always evident. Um, so more information on why they made certain choices would have been helpful. And this selected work scored a four. So in this last example, which is ceramics, under ideas, I utilized water to erode negative spaces into the clay body. So notice, the idea actually also hints to why they did certain processes. So materials, porcelain. The process, I experimented with masking portions of the vessel to protect them from the erosive effects. I applied a layer of shellac and allowed the water to affect the layers below. So process really kind of filled in all of the blanks of what they were doing. The idea, I utilized water to erode negative spaces. So now we understand what the masking off is doing. We understand what the student is trying to achieve. In the third one, so if you notice, once again, the first two works are definitely related. Same idea, same materials, same processes, two different pieces. The third piece, I explored chemicals such as sodium silicate, which dramatically dehydrates the clay in a natural and unpredictable way. And this is a great detail shot because you really see what it's done to the clay body, all right? So in terms of three-dimensional skills, we're looking at advanced three-dimensional skills in terms of craftsmanship, execution, and volume and space. All of these pieces are definitely using occupied and unoccupied spaces. So there's a lot of strong contrast going on. 
and also in the way they're using their glazing. They're using that to highlight the occupied and unoccupied spaces. And so that is probably one of the strongest ceramics pieces in this grouping that you see today. Under materials, process, and ideas, so the student is really experimenting and manipulating the clay body and seeing how far they can take the erosion effect. And we have a clear understanding of how the ideas inform the materials, how the ideas inform the processes, and how the processes inform the materials and the ideas. So we definitely have synthesis going on here. That's very clear. In terms of the writing, the written evidence provided by the student speaks to the materials used, the processes used, and the idea that drove the decision-making process. So this selected work scored a five. So let's shift gears now and go to sustained investigation, which you saw way back in one of the very first videos. So remember, there are four rows, inquiry, practice experimentation and revision, materials, process, and ideas, and then in this case, three-dimensional art and design skills. If you look at these scoring points here, one, twos, and threes, under the one, under inquiry, the written evidence, so what you write, identifies an inquiry, but the visual evidence, what you made, does not relate to the inquiry. Okay, or the written evidence does not identify an inquiry. Okay, and let's contrast this with the very far end, the three. So the written evidence identifies an inquiry that guides the sustained investigation. And remember, this is an and, not an or, and visual evidence demonstrates the sustained investigation. The middle column. Written evidence identifies an inquiry that relates to the sustained investigation. So in this case, it's almost like the written, invest, the written evidence kind of follows the work, whereas in the three, the written evidence leads the work. Under practice, experimentation, and revision, visual evidence, so what you made of practice, experimentation, or revision, right? So in this case, what we're looking at is whether or not the student actually, A, made work, experimented, and then came back and made revisions to the work, or in a second piece of work, made a revision or added on to their body of knowledge. However, visual evidence does not relate to a sustained investigation. So in this case, what was written does not really correlate to what was made, all right? Let's go to the far extreme, the three, the high end. Visual evidence of practice experimentation and revision demonstrates development of the sustained investigation. So here we're seeing practice, they're making stuff, experimentation, they're trying new things. And as we see the evolution of the body of work go, we're seeing that they're making changes to the body of work and adding to their knowledge. And written evidence describes how the sustained investigation shows evidence of practice, experimentation, or revision. All right. So in that and statement, so what they wrote is talking about the sustained investigation and pointing out the evidence of it in terms of practice and experimentation or revision. The middle of the road, visual evidence, what you make can demonstrate practice and experimentation or revision, all right? So this is where that or comes in for here. So in this case, maybe they made lots of pieces, but they didn't really grow from it. They didn't build on top of their previous work or their previous experiments. And written evidence relates to the visual evidence. So what you, what you wrote relates to what you made in terms of practice, experimentation, or revision. 
materials, process, and ideas for the one, little to no evidence of a visual relationship among materials, processes, or ideas. In the three, there is a visual relationship, what you make among the materials, processes, and ideas are clearly evident and demonstrate synthesis. So that goes back to in the earlier video where we're talking about the ideas are informing the materials, which are informing the processes, and all the way around again, all right? Why you choose a material should be just as important and should inform why you choose a process. And that should also be informed by why you decide to make the piece. So in the two, the visual relationship among the materials, processes, or ideas are evident. So here we have that disconnect situation where we don't have a true synthesis between all three areas. We may have a synthesis between two areas, but not to that third area. Under 3D drawing, 3D art and design skills, a one, visual evidence, what you make, displays rudimentary and moderate 3D skills. The three, visual evidence, what you make, demonstrates good and advanced 3D skills. And in the middle, the two, visual evidence, what you make, demonstrates moderate and good 3D skills. So there's a little bit of overlap between each of these sections. So remember, we're talking about 10 images, not 10 pieces of work. work. And within each image, you can composite or combine multiple images to form one image. You're looking at a 1200 character, including spaces, that's characters, not words, statement, which identifies the questions that guided your sustained investigation and describes how your sustained investigation shows evidence of practice, experimentation, and revision. You're gonna to have to provide materials used, 100 characters, including spaces, processes used, once again, 100 characters, including spaces, and size, height, width, depth, and remember, these measurements are in inches. So let's take a look at these different highlights. Okay, I hope that's pretty clear. So now let's go to three different portfolios. So in this portfolio, we see several different constructs going on. We see a variety of different materials going on. So underneath the artist statement, so in the written evidence, they titled the portfolio Modern Fossils. And I underlined is about fossils we make in our life, right? In most cases, most people associate fossils with dinosaurs or things from a long, long time ago. But what about the things in our time today? Things we forget, abandon, and overlook. It's almost like leaving a mark that affects us in the future. Within all of my pieces, I really wanted that recognizing or surprising element to make people take a second glance. I love using emphasis in my materials because of that eye-catching factor. So when we start talking about this and breaking this down, we're gonna break it down first in terms of the first row. So it scored a one. The written evidence identifies an inquiry, but the visual evidence does not relate to the inquiry. All right. Under number two, it also scored a one. What they made shows evidence of practice and experimentation. Maybe not revision so much because they really don't see a growth in what they made over the series of 10 images. And visual evidence does not really relate to the sustained investigation. Materials, process, and ideas scored a two. The visual relationship, what they made, 
among materials and processes, or ideas are evident. Once again, this is not really an example of synthesis, which is the three, okay? It shows a visual relationship between materials and processes, but maybe not the idea behind it. And under 3D skills, it also scored a two. In terms of what they made, it demonstrates moderate and good 3D skills. And probably the strongest piece out of all of them is this one right here. But in all of the works, we really don't understand how they become or how they will be fossils or modern fossils. You know, in terms of the eggs here that they generated, they look pretty fresh. In this case, there's a little bit of dirt and debris on top of the fan. But in terms of the hand, even in the two views, it's pretty pristine with that white plaster. It's simply the addition of the band-aids and a little bit of paint that indicates the action of that this hand is undergone damage, but we don't see any decay. We don't see any erosion. So in the next portfolio, we have multiple wall sculptures. And in terms of the artist statement, they're using a variety of materials cut into different shapes. And then by layering them, they're adding new levels to each of the unique bases, all right? They're adding different materials and pieces on top of one another. Throughout the process of making these projects, the main goal for my idea was to add as many interesting and complex layers to end up with a visually stimulating piece with many aspects popping out. So while the pieces are visually really interesting, what they're describing is a process, not necessarily an inquiry, okay? So this is where this kind of will give a lot of people a hang up where they get the idea of a process and the idea of an inquiry kind of confused, all right? So that's why in terms of row one, row A, sorry, inquiry, it scored a one, all right? The written evidence does not identify an inquiry. Row B, practice experimentation revision, it scored a two, all right? What they made definitely shows evidence of practice and experimentation. You know, they're trying different arrangements of pieces on top of one another, different colors on top of one another. But the written evidence only really relates to the practice and experimentation. Okay, there's not really a clear understanding of how it relates to the revision. And then in row C, materials, process, and ideas, it also scored a two. The visual relationship among materials, processes, or ideas are evident. So what they made clearly demonstrates materials and processes. But once again, the idea is slightly disconnected. We don't have a true synthesis going on here. There's no clear explanation of why they chose the materials they did, all right? Was it because they wanted to recycle things from a landfill? Um, that would have been more closer to synthesis. Um, but in terms of what they wrote and what they made, there's that disconnect. There's lack of synthesis. Now, under row D, three-dimensional skills, it scored a three because what they made, the visual evidence, is definitely of good and advanced 3D skills, without a doubt. I mean, they're, in terms of composition of the pieces, they're really, really, really well done. But where it's lacking is in the fact that there is no true inquiry. They confused inquiry with process. So in the last example I'm gonna show you, this is probably the most complex type of example I can show. And if you follow my cursor, this image here is a single image. What they've done is they've actually taken one, two, three, four images, connected them together, stitched them together, either in Photoshop, Photoshop Elements, 
Um, any number of photo manipulation programs allows you to do this. And this really gives you a wonderfully kind of multiple views of the piece. Same thing here. You see the sketchbook opened up and you see these two close up details that refer to what you see in the sketchbook. All right. In this one, you see the overall installation and then you also see a close up of this element here as well as a close up of the detail on the inside. So this is also once again composited, three images put together into one image. So for sustained investigation, this is a great way of being able to show the reader more information about your piece, all right? So under student written evidence, the fascinating thing is they start with a two-dimensional pen drawing but then it evolved into a three-dimensional paintings where they're actually integrating the objects into three-dimensional space, whether they're within a frame, whether they're hung from a ceiling, hung from a ceiling, hung from a frame. But those flat two-dimensional elements are stitched together, layered on top of one another. Sometimes there's filling added to it to give it volume and space. And then they're hung, and there's that activation of occupied and unoccupied space. So in terms of inquiry, it scores a three. The written evidence identifies an inquiry that guides the sustained investigation. So what was written leads the student into what they make. And the visual, em visual evidence, what they made, demonstrates the sustained investigation. In row B, practice experimentation and revision, it also scored a three. There's clear visual evidence of practice, experimentation, and revision, which demonstrates development of the sustained investigation. So every piece that they made, they grew from the previous piece. They added more information. The student was more informed with every piece that follows after that. And what they wrote describes how the sustained investigation shows evidence of practice, experimentation, or revision. Under row C, materials I process and ideas also scored a three. What they made demonstrates a clear relationship between the materials, processes, and ideas. And ideas are clearly evident and demonstrate synthesis, all right? Once again, the reason why they chose the materials has a direct correlation to the processes they used, all right, as well as to the idea. So here you actually have synthesis being generated. You have a complete integration between those three elements, materials, process, and ideas. In terms of three-dimensional skills, it clearly shows what they made of good and advanced three-dimensional skills. They're really, really working with occupied and unoccupied space, texture, color, form, line. So this scores a three. So in closing, remember, the portfolio is made up of two sections, selected works and sustained investigation. Within selected works, you're submitting three works with two views each. Remember that second view can be composited to add more information for the viewer to look at. And the most successful portfolios in selected works will show visual evidence of advanced three-dimensional skills, visual evidence of synthesis or integration of materials, process, and ideas, and visual evidence of the written idea in all three works. And those are scored on a scale of one to five. Under sustained investigation, 10 images. Remember that's not 10 pieces, that's 10 images. And in that last slide you saw, you saw an excellent use of compositing to provide more information for the reader. The most successful portfolio de submissions will demonstrate written and visual evidence of inquiry that furthers the sustained investigation. 
written and visual evidence of practice experimentation and or revision that furthers the sustained investigation, visual evidence of synthesis of materials, process, and ideas, and visual evidence of advanced 3D skills. And those four score areas are scored on a scale of one to three. So in terms of sustained investigation, you're really looking at that, once again, we're gonna use the word synthesis or integration between what you write and what you make, all right? So I hope you all had a wonderful day. And as a reader, I'm looking forward to seeing all the work. So have a wonderful day. Goodbye. One last detail. If you have any issues with technology, please don't hesitate and reach out to College Board at the website below. Thank you for watching.